The following program is made possible with the support of BB&T, best bank in town since 1872. Papa John's Pizza, better ingredients, better pizza. Cookout, hamburgers, hot dogs, and great milkshakes. ESPN 630 AM, Wilmington's all sports station. And Sunny 104.5, Wilmington's best mix while you work. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Sports Roundtable. I'm Marty Fuhrer. We close the regular season, look forward to the postseason. Should be a great program for you. And why don't we start off, if we can, over at Ashley and Tom Eanes alongside. And, Coach, you know, in many ways, that last game was a signature of almost the whole season. I mean, you fought through injuries, and you came this close, but not quite enough to get over the hump. Yes, that's true. I think uh, the kids gave another effort. Uh, we weren't good enough to, you know, get into the playoffs because we just didn't take care of business when we needed to. But there again, you know, going through what they did and having to fight through, I mean, four guys were starting on offense and on defense that uh, were there at the Hogger game just a few weeks ago. Uh, so that means there were seven guys on each side of the ball that weren't around. Uh, we had some freshmen the other night that were having to come in and get warmed up and be ready to go, and they were giving us some time. And I was very pleased with the kids' effort. Uh, you know, it was a different night, Friday night, uh, but we hung in there to the end, and West Brunswick was just better. Okay, let's take a look at some highlights if we can. We're heading down to West Brunswick. Ashley and West Brunswick, and we're underway. Uh, this is Charles Dent uh, getting a sweep from, uh, I think Ant was the quarterback at that point. And uh, that was just sort of a botched triple play that Ant made into a good play at for us. Uh, Jesse Jewell, 24 there, had a good first half. I think he had 85 yards before he separated his shoulder and then we didn't have him anymore. And, uh, you know, we really established him so we felt good about what our chances were. Uh, you know, when he left and Ant, the quarterback, had to move in the B-back and that really took some time away from us. And uh, this is a package we had to put in and run a little bit. Uh, and it came in handy when we had Shepard playing a lot of quarterback. And we ran a lot of power stuff with Shepard. He ended up with over 85 yards rushing. Uh, he threw two touchdown passes and ran two himself. And because, uh, you know, like I said, Ant had to go play a lot of different spots for us. And then when Ant went out injured, uh, I don't even remember who finished. So, but uh, we just lined up and tried to run some power football because we really were not a triple football team anymore with the injuries like they are. <clears throat> then we lost number nine there. He broke his hand and split in at free safety. So that hurt us when he went out. But uh, the whole secondary is new. Uh, I think most of them played quite a bit against Laney, but did not play any other time during the year. Uh, quarterback really hurt us in this game. I knew number four was a good athlete, but number seven did a good job. And uh, so, you know, they did a good job running that zone read stuff. And now he's Shepard's in and quarterback, and he's maybe not the fleetest foot, but uh, he's a load when he gets going, and he's not afraid to run it. And think about that kid's only played two varsity football games and half of a JV game in his whole career. Uh, there was a strip by Anthony Boone, and Ant covers it up, and we got the ball and a chance to get back in this thing right before halftime. And then he hits Charles Dent in the corner. And uh, now we're tied at halftime, so at least we have a chance to Stay in it. And second half was a little bit shaky at times, but uh, there again, uh, Ants at B-back because Jesse's out with a separated shoulder. But Shepard's reading that part of it, and we're running a lot of power and going from there. And we didn't throw the ball but four times, but Shepard was three for four. So That's Anthony uh, there on the run. This is Charles Dan again on the sweep. And so, I mean, it's amazing in many ways that he's even out there. It is. Uh, he's not where he should be, but to be even better, I don't know if I could walk, much less better run like he's doing. That's Ant uh, running another power play for us. Shepard just running a power option look type thing that we do. And 
And Stephon Russell, number 20, had to come in, and he hasn't played as much lately, and he had a big touchdown catch for us. And uh, so this is, I think, Steph's catch right here. Uh, Shepard just stood in there and flipped it out to him, and they got us the chance to tie the ball game and miss the extra point. But uh, the game got exciting down there because we were down one with 40 seconds to go, and so we had to onside kick. and. Uh, so we onside kicked the ball, and uh, their kid, we didn't hit him, and their kid caught it, ran it in, which really worked out the best for us sure. because with the extra point, we're only down eight. And so they kick off, and uh, Ant Boone runs the thing back to about the 35-yard line, and Shepard throws a 40-yard pass, and we're, now we're down inside their 35. So we get up and spike the football and clock it and stop the clock with about seven seconds to go, and then uh, he throws it in the end zone and tips off their kid into our kid's fingers out of the back of the end zone, you know. So uh, for those kids to even do that and to speak of the protection that we got to throw it and Shepard to make the throw, uh, you know, uh, amazing group of kids to fight through all that. Yeah, and, and part of that, I mean, the dynamics of high school football, you're literally lining some kids up there and saying, now you go this way and turn left because it's the first time they've been in that position. Oh, Coach Frazier was having a good time with me Saturday when we were at our meeting. He was laughing about how upset I was, but I was trying to get kids in position. You know how you get excited at a ball game anyway. Now, all right, you've got to be here and you've got to run this route or you've got to block this guy. So it was, it was a crazy mess. But talk about your seniors and some of the kids that stepped up at the end that became part of this program. Well, you know, the Shepherd kid to come out that late and to throw to and run to, and he's the coolest customer in the world. Uh, I call him Christmas because you, you finally get him out there, he finally gets here, and then it's over with so quick. And uh, so it, it's amazing to have him. But Frankie Keller, is, I mean, he's typical of what you want to coach in a high school football team. So Frankie is the leader. You had uh, Boones and Anthony Andrews. I mean, he sacrificed a lot at different positions for us. Uh, Eli Prendables and Jeff Greers. I mean, there's, you could go on and on about uh, a good core group of kids that had, we had a little bit more depth. Maybe we would have had a chance to get in the playoffs. They had to at least represent our school that way, but I think they did represent us very well as far as their effort. Okay, well, we appreciate it. I appreciate all you Congratulations on the did. season, and I know, I mean, you'll always remember this group for everything that they went through and got there at the end. Uh, we will, and I appreciate you because you made it so easy when you're having a rough season to come up here and do this. Uh, to have you carry me through this, I appreciate it. Yeah, you guys do all the work. When we come back, we'll take a look at New Hanover as they get ready for playoff action. Stay with us. Program, the Laney Buccaneers on the road in the first round of the tournament. And coach, you go to Pinecrest, a team that, that wins 10 and 1. Um, talk a little bit about the team that you've seen on tape. Well, they're a good football team. They're, uh, they, they, they play into some of our strengths, too. So, as far as what I mean by that is uh, they're big up front, um, offensively and defensively. And so, offensively, we've been wanting to try to run the ball the last few weeks, and uh, they look like they're going to be able to match up against those things. You know, I feel like if we could throw the ball around a little bit, we could really hurt them. But, um, you know, we're not unable to do that at this point. So, uh, we're just going to have to execute what we do offensively, and we do it pretty well. And there's they put seven, eight guys in the, block, in the box all the time. So, as, if we can break through that front line, we can have some big plays. But we have to be patient and willing to, um, you know, just chip away at that defense a little bit to be able to put up some points. And uh, defensively, you know, we got to stop the stop the option a little bit. They don't definitely don't run it as good as an Ashley team does or anything at this point. But uh, they're they're willing just to take those couple yards and. Uh, the, the biggest play that scares me uh, defensively is the boot. They run boot very successfully. They'll run it a couple times uh, in, a, in, one, in a series. And, you know, we, we really just got to be able to, um, you know, be disciplined on defense and know our alignment and assignment is going to be huge for us. Talk a little bit about the dynamics of postseason. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. do you treat these games differently or do you try to have the same routine? for the kids day in and day out? I mean, routine's going to be the same. You know, um, obviously there's more emphasis on, you know, this could be the last time for the seniors. So you try to lean on your seniors a little bit more and asking them what, what they want to get out of this postseason. But uh, as far as routine and practice, you know, everything will be the same. We try to stick to all the things. We think we prepare well during the regular season, so we're going to keep that mentality going into the, to the postseason. Um, if anything that we change in practice, we might back back off hitting a little bit and actually some of the conditioning obviously you know at this point in the season you're pretty much in shape you are who you are as far as when it comes to some of those things but um, we're going to try to get in the reps and we're going to try to uh, uh, know our alignment know our assignment and do what we need to do on Friday. Okay let's talk a little bit about offensively mm -hmm. if things are going your way what are some things that fans can look for when they make that trip? 
Well, I think if things are going uh, our way offensively, we'll be able to be balanced a little bit. We need to be able to throw some hitches and some slants and uh, you know some, some out routes to some of our receivers. And if we can be successful at those little things uh, passing-wise, it could really help us uh, you know, running the football. Just, just to be able to take some pressure off our offensive line at, at, at different times offensively, that, that would be huge for us. And, uh, you know, there's two key guys for us to be successful. It's Javon and, and Tyreek. You know, the more carries we can get out of those two guys, uh, the more successful we can be. Um, just limit our negative plays. And, uh, you know, I, I think we can score just like some of the other teams that we saw on film has, have scored on them. Yeah, they're 10-1. and mm -hmm. They've played a lot of close games. Yes, if you can get in a position where they've got to come from behind, mm -hmm. would that take them out of some of the things they like to do? And I, I believe so. You know, I don't know if we're explosive enough at this point to be up a couple scores on them um, because they, they, they do grind it, grind it out, and, you know, it will be a fast football game as far as they run the football and we run the football. Um, but I, I think we have, we have what it takes to, you know, be in, be in there. Um, all the way through, but uh, if we jump on top of them, you know, that could definitely help us out uh, in, in many different ways defensively and offensively. If we can get on top of them and just run the football, you know, that could be a great, great, uh, great uh, game plan for us also. So it sounds like with the two game plans, every possession is going to be important because you may not have the multiple possessions you've had in some other games. Yeah, I mean, Hoggard's a good example of that yeah. game. You know, every possession was very important, and, you know, we feel like we threw a couple possessions away in the Hoggard game, and uh, hopefully the kids learn from that. It's, it's great to have those uh, tight games, you know, in your regular season to refer back to them in the postseason so kids can learn from those experiences and understand we can't, can't go three and out because we might not get the ball back for the next quarter. So uh, we, we've been harping on that, and we're going to try to continue to do that. Yeah, historically, they've been a pretty physical team. Mm -hmm. You've got some good speed. Do you think mm -hmm. you can use that speed and get some of those guys in the open field? We, we think so. We, we think is with as many guys as they put in the box, we're, we're able to get some big plays on the outside. Now, the, the trick is trying to get to the outside right. and make sure you have everybody blocked well. Um, they have uh, some huge nose guards and some big defensive tackles also, you know, with playing kind of a five-man front up in there. Um, so if you can get to the outside, there's plenty of room, but you, you need to be able to make sure you have everybody, you know, aligned and assigned properly to get to that outside. You've got a number of young guys. You've got some mm -hmm. guys that maybe haven't been at this level mm -hmm. as far as postseason in their present roles. Mentally, how do, how do you talk to them? Because obviously you mentioned the postseason is different. I mean, that little mistake is magnified or that big yeah. play has got much more impact. Well, we really don't have to harp on that much because we've learned through the through our um, conference schedule and our non-conference schedule that uh, you know when you play good teams, uh, everything that you do is magnified, and we can just use throughout the season for those learning experiences. So I'm not worried about going into uh, going into the game where guys you know might not give their best effort, or they might be intimidated by any means, or you know scared to make a mistake. I don't I don't think we're like that as a football team. I think the guys are going to be aggressive, and it's good that we've never played them before. You know so. Um, those things, you know, play into our advantage. A, a ten and one team, you know, for us, when we watch them on film, we'd we'll be like, okay, we've we played teams of this caliber, so we won't we won't have that nervousness or you know that maybe intimidation factor of some of the other teams that they've maybe ran up against this season. Yeah, I was about to say the fact that you just came through a conference schedule like mm -hmm. you did, where I mean you had back to back to back to back mm -hmm. to back challenges. That has to help you when you go into postseason play. It, it does because you. I mean, every team you play is going to be a pretty good football team. You know, they're in the they're in the postseason for the same reason you're in the postseason. You know, you've done some things to, to put yourself in that position. So we feel like, you know, just get one, and then everything else after that is just going to be a, a fun experience, and you never know what's going to happen after you can just get one of them knocked out. This coming Friday night, first-round play, Laney on the road is the number 13 seed. When we come back, we'll continue our look at a couple home playoff games. Stay with us. Welcome back to the program. Postseason action, home game at Legion Stadium as New Hanover will take on Northern Durham. And Coach, you know, this time of the year, where you are in the bracket means so much. Hey Amen. You know, we left Fieldhouse Friday night, I guess Saturday morning um, after Topsail. You know, we're trying to crunch numbers, move around. Some things happened in Big 4A, and we thought there was a very good chance we would be playing Newburn and they would have to draw out of the hat, whether we played in Newburn or played at New Hanover. And, then go Scotland County week two. And uh, we didn't know how our kids would respond to that because, you know, Newman, Newburn's that kind of been our Achilles heel sure. in the playoffs. And then what Scotland did to us earlier in the year, and you just, you never know how your kids are going to respond to that. And, you know, Scotland and Newburn's out of the equation. The biggest thing for us right now is 
our kids can't be looking to next week and you know we've got to take care of northern and and if we're able to advance then worry about next week okay let's take a look, look at some highlights from yes, last week i know you were pleased with this group yes, came off the bus yep. took care of business amen you know we talked about before we went on air our kids we didn't have the intensity and the passion that we had like for the south game um for senior night but it's first time probably more so than any group I've had at New Hanover, they came to the field house. Um, they went into meetings. We broke from there, um, did our old pregame stuff, and got on the bus. But it was like they were clocked in. Um, it was all business. We felt like that we had two quarters. Let's go play two quarters. And uh, if we come folks to do what we're supposed to do, uh, let's get better and, and try to continue to grow. And, and that's what we did. And we take it. We didn't play a lot of JV kids Thursday night against their JVs. We saved them and. They played um, a lot Friday night. We got some guys banged up, and like we talked about last week, with Teron Piedra's gone for the year with a broke ankle um, at running back. And uh, they end up with four yards offense for the night. Um, and defensively, I feel like we're getting better. We've been playing a ton of guys um, all year long, and that's always my philosophy. You know, during the regular season, we try as much as we can to rotate guys in as far as too deep. and. You know, because everything we do is about the playoffs. Right here, Ramon bounces outside, should have went inside, but he's starting to see that burst again. He's been hurt for quite a while. Um, hadn't made that public knowledge or common knowledge, and he's starting to get that gear back, and he showed it Friday night the few times that we let him be in there. He got to play a lot of defensive back Friday. Um, that's something we haven't been able to do for most of the season just because of injuries, and at the beginning of the year when we lost Malik, um, so he hadn't got a whole lot of reps on Friday nights um, at DB, but he played a lot of corner and he'll get corner this Friday night and hopefully get some more corner. Kenny Jarrett, number one, pound for pound, the strongest kid at New Hanover High School. Um, he is a freak in the weight room um, for his little 160 pound butt as much as he hang cleans and squats and benches is just phenomenal. Um, great catch right there by Ramon Simpson. Like I said, it's good to see him starting to get that burst. and. And, uh, you know, that's something we're, we're very excited about. Rome Murphy just continues to get better and better at tight end, understanding um, the routes from being inside there and doing a great, he's done a great job blocking all year long. He's so athletic. He's gotten so much bigger and stronger that um, hopefully somebody will take a chance and, you know, because he's a smart kid and uh, he wants the opportunity to play at the next level. And uh, he had a big night. They really, I think they were more concerned with our wide receivers then are tight end and forgot about him a lot and uh, I, I felt sorry for the running backs and the quarterback for tops and I don't mean that in an ugly way um, but a lot of times if my wife wasn't able to go to the game she listened to it on the radio and she said it sounded like y'all took about every handoff and that's kind of the way it felt even when we put those twos threes and fours and everybody else we had in there in the second half and like I said they had four yards of total offense and and, uh, but their kids played hard. They, they gave it all they could and, and uh, were just outmatched Friday night. Right here, people don't realize how his 241 pound butt can run now, but he can run. And uh, he had a high ankle sprain all at the beginning of the year happening at Scotland County and he's getting his speed back. And we've got Anthony Barriner back at middle linebacker. Um, we got Talik Moore back at defensive end. And so we're kind of perfect timing and catching that stride. And, and while those guys have been out and getting some other guys reps, other kids have gotten a lot better. Um, string bean right tackle right there, been a backup all year long. He didn't block a soul, but daggum if he didn't look pretty running down the field. Um, he did a great job starting for us Friday. With Grace Bethel didn't. We rested him up. He's been banged up and trying to get ready for the playoffs. You said the magic word, getting ready for the playoffs. Yep. Are you where you want to be, you think, going into the postseason? In eight years at New Hanover, um, three years at James Keenan in the state of North Carolina, um, this is probably the healthiest um, we've been going into the playoffs since I've been here. And uh, great adjustment off the route. It was not meant for that ball. He, he went on an out route. Um, they covered it. He broke it, went up, and we put it on the money. But we are probably in the best shape physically than we've been since I've been back in North Carolina. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. And we've had some injuries. Um, losing Tehran really hurts. Um, but compared to, you know, especially the last three years, um, even that Eastern Championship run we had, 
um, a few years back when we lost 12 players that year, and then we lost Everett Israel in the third round at Southern Durham. So we're healthier than we've ever been. I think our mindset of our kids is where it needs to be. And if we just continue to come to practice, we had a great practice yesterday, um, Veterans Day out of school. And uh, I don't think we had a kid that was probably 45 minutes, 42 minutes early. I mean, that was the last kid getting there. Our kids were early. and. That's, that's something that's a little different. We always have on those holidays, some kids, you know, they ain't there 30 minutes forward and you're trying to get up and make sure they got a ride and all that stuff. But, I mean, there was 17 kids there by um, 1.15 yesterday when I pulled in. And, uh, you know, they're excited and ready to roll and feel like we got a great opportunity to make a lot of noise and go to work. In the 20 seconds that we have left, first round game, it's yep. almost a case of where you just have to worry about you taking care of business. Well, they're so athletic. Um, they're really hard to defend because even breaking them down on film, a lot of times you don't have a clue what they're running. Um, they got a quarterback. He looks like he's about 6'5", 230. He looks like my defensive end, number three. And he's number three. And sometimes he just does his own thing and you never know where he's going to go. Um, that makes it hard to defend him. And they've got three running backs. They rotate from the secondary end to running back that can all fly. And so our kids have got to come play. We've got to be disciplined and we've got to tackle at the point of attack. If they get past us, we're, I mean, we can't catch them. Okay, first round playoff game at Legion, 730, New Hanover, Northern Durham. Tickets are available right now. When we come back, the other home playoff game, that would be Hoggards. Stay with us. Welcome back to the program. We mentioned there are two home games this coming Friday, one at Legion and the other one at Hoggard, and that's because you're the number two seed. And before we go to this coming Friday, sure. you close the season. Yeah. And I know you closed the season against a team that ended up winless. Yeah. But there were certain things you wanted to see, and I think you saw them. Well, the big thing for us, I think, first off, just congratulations to our football team, particularly our senior class, for uh, being undefeated in the conference and being conference champions. It's something, you know, it's, it's something we had as a goal all along, and we didn't try and hide it. Uh, we felt like it might even define our season if we came up short of that conference championship. And so what a credit to those guys, all the hard work they put in uh, with lifting the weights in the January and the passing leagues all summer long and everything they've done to, to reach that goal. They deserve a lot of credit for. Uh, Friday's game, of course, we played Monday of that week against uh, West Brunswick. It was kind of a makeup game from Friday night. And with the short week, I was a little concerned because we had invested a lot in the, the West Brunswick game. That's where we clinched the number one seed. And, uh, it was being at home, it was exciting, and then to turn around and come back, and you're, you're playing a team that's over, right? Uh, 0 9 or whatever they were, and it's going to be a small crowd at South Brunswick just because the team is struggling. And so, when we got there, I felt like we were in for an emotional letdown, and I thought we were a good enough team to overcome that. But at the same time, I, I felt like it, there might be some points during the evening where we might be frustrated as coaches, and, and that proved to be true. There were too many missed assignments, too many penalties. But at the same time, uh, we did what we had to do, particularly on defense, uh, to get the victory. I think we had a 24-0 halftime lead, but, but not really happy with the way we went about it. A lot of missed opportunities. Uh, got a pick six, I think, in the third quarter, and then also kind of drove the ball on the ground and scored a touchdown to, to get the final score. I think it's 38-0. But ha happy with the football team, proud of the football team for all they've done and all they've accomplished. And, and now we start that second season, and, and we have a very tough Cape Fear team to look forward to. All right, let's take a look at some highlights okay. from Sounds down great. in Southport this coming, this past Friday night. Uh, here we are on defense again, D front. Uh, those guys are good up there. We're doing a good job. Kyle Delaney, good pressure, good takeoff. Uh, that's Kirk Messick delivering a blow there uh, and, and breaking up the pass. Uh, Julius Reynolds coming downhill right now. I think Malik Moore was in that pile in the three technique tackle. Got a little pressure coming off the edge here. They're trying to do a little speed option. Uh, Kyle Delaney ends up uh, recovering the fumble. Uh, had a missed opportunity there, so we end up kicking a field goal. Uh, Landon Mays just done such a great job all year long. I think that was about 38 yards out. Uh, Pre-game looked like he could have gone into the mid-40s in his uh, range. Again, defensively, great takeoff from Malik Moore. Uh, just just playing dominant inside. It's a great three take. We got two great defensive ends in Devin Bond and Kyle Delaney and three technique Lake Moore. And then the nose guard is Tyler Beeson. He's kind of the young puppy of the group. Uh, first year defensive lineman, played offensive line last year, but uh, he's he's gonna be a good one before he's done. 
Again, Julius Reynolds coming downhill, uh, making a tackle, ripping the ball out, and uh, getting the fumble recovery for us. This is uh, Xavier Johnson here. Xavier's just gonna throw a little hitch out there to Harrison Smith. Harrison takes advantage of a big cushion from the corner and ends up being a very simple play. Ends up being about 20, 25 yard uh, game for us. Uh, we come back, uh, I think this is changing the quarter, second quarter here, another little hitch. Again, about eight to 10 yards on that one. Uh, here we are again, this is second quarter action. Now Austin Sean Lever's in. This is Trevor Brown. Trevor takes a little outside zone, uh, mid zone play, and uh, we block it up pretty good. Uh, Douglas Nesbitt's a sophomore H back. We brought up from the JV so that Trevor could move back to tailback, and uh, Doug Nesbitt did a good job there of uh, blocking that one up. Uh, here's Austin throwing deep to Randall Emerson, kind of a skinny post uh, for a touchdown. Uh, this is again, I guess, second quarter action later. And here's Trevor. Uh, taking it in for the score, and so now we're starting to get, we're starting to sharpen it up a little bit. I believe we're going to score one more time here uh, offensively in the in the uh, first half. Again, defensively, Devin Bond on the edge here, kind of holding it down. Uh, Sauce Gaddafi Turner comes up from his corner position, helps us play defense. This, we were backed up here. This ends up being a really good drive for us to get out of. Uh, the shadows of their own goal post and end up driving the length of the field. This is second quarter, I believe it's right before the half. And uh, this was a good good drive for us just to kind of get out and create some separation between us and South Brunswick. Again, Trevor Brown uh, taking the ball for a good 20, 25 yard game. I think he finished over 130 yards rushing. He's just done a great job for us, so happy for him. Again, Julius Reynolds from his Mike linebacker position, stuffing it up the middle. Uh, Julius has had an outstanding season. He played outside linebacker for us last year and made all conference. Uh, this year he's at Mike linebacker and has had an even better year. She's been so, so pleased with him. So uh, a good game. We didn't quite hit the standards we had hoped for, uh, particularly in the first half. In the second half, we kind of backed off a little bit. But uh, again, now the big thing for us is, is trying to you know, get refocused and, and get ready to play Cape Fear High School. What does Cape Fear do well? Hey, what? They're, they're, they're an athletic team. You know, Fayetteville area, you're going to have some athletes. They've got good size. Uh, they run well. I think their coach does a great job with schemes. He, uh, you know, they're very multiple on defense. Uh, they're, they're somewhat limited throwing the ball, and so hopefully our defense will be able to make them one-dimensional and shut them down. And then offensively, it's going to be a challenge because they've got athletes on the perimeter, and it's going to be a challenge for our guys to work their way free and get open and and yet they'll, they'll gang up on you in the box and they do a lot of twisting and stunning and that sort of thing that can, can confuse some blocking assignments. So it's going to be a challenge. We don't play well this Friday night, we'll be done. And, and that's the message to our players. And I think they understand that. We've got good leadership, so I expect us to come out and be, be focused and ready to play. Okay, again, that's a 7.30 kickoff at Hoggard. The two home games, New Hanover is home at 7.30 against North Durham. And again, Cape Fear is at Hoggard, 7.30 kickoff as well. Laney is on the road. Full highlight package for you next week when we come back here on Sports Roundtable. Good night, everybody.